People aged 90 and over are considered to be long-lived. There are not many such people among the entire population of the world. However, some of them have lived for 100 years and have seen a lot of things in their life. Human civilization is something like the universe. There are very young planets, barely formed, absorbing the rays of their parent star like a child absorbs its mother's milk. There are older planets, mature, wrapped around their star more than a hundred times. And there are very ancient planets, long-lived. They are billions of years old. In the constellation of Scorpius, at a distance of 12,400 light years from Earth, is one of the oldest of the now known to man exoplanets, PSRB 162020, 6B, or Planet Methuselah. If the Big Bang Theory is to be believed, the universe originated about 14 billion years ago. The exoplanet Methuselah formed in the globular cluster M4 about 12 billion years ago. Imagine, this planet appeared at a time when the Earth and the solar system did not even exist. Methuselah has 2.5 times the mass of Jupiter. It is in an unusual double system, both components of which are burned. Out stars that long ago ended their active evolutionary phase, a millisecond pulsar, and a white dwarf. It orbits around these stars at a distance of 23 astronomical units. This is a little more than the distance from uranium to the sun, and makes one revolution in about 100 years. Methuselah has a very turbulent and unusual history. The white dwarf in this system is 330, one time smaller in luminosity than the sun. In Methuselah's sky, this star would shine only slightly brighter than the full moon and appear as a bright bluish white star. Were it not for the second star, the pulsar, Methuselah, would be plunged into eternal night. The millisecond pulsar is a very old neutron star, respun hard by the falling matter of its companion star. The white dwarf is the remnant of this star. The accretion process ended about 480 million years ago, and now the luminosity of pulsar is relatively small, but it is rather small for other pulsars because compared to the luminosity of the white dwarf, it is huge. The chemical composition of the stars in the system also differs, as these are very old stars, and the heavy elements in them are about 20 times less than in the sun. Apparently, the chemical composition of Methuselah is also combined. That is, the planet consists almost entirely of hydrogen and helium. Because the orbital plane is tilted at a 55 degree angle, Methuselah is irradiated with a white dwarf most of the time, but twice during its orbital period, or simply put, every 50 years, where its orbital plane intersects the pulsar's radiation plane, it is hit by a frenzied pulsar beam. A pulsating stream of electrons and positrons along with the pulsar's harsh X-ray radiation, rains down on the planet's upper atmosphere. The average temperature over the orbital period is about minus 145 degrees Celsius. However, this does not take into account internal heat sources, which may have run out over 12 billion years. If some of the energy is dissipated rather than absorbed, the average temperature will be lower, but it cannot be too low either. Since Methuselah is located in a globular cluster, the total radiation from the stars of this cluster heats its atmosphere. It turns out that for most of its year, Methuselah is heated by white dwarf radiation, the total radiation from the M4 stars, and has a total temperature of minus 193 degrees Celsius. At this temperature, Methuselah would be shrouded in light dark blue clouds of frozen methane. Methuselah is most likely a gas giant with no solid surface such as Earth's, the deep blue and light clouds are somewhat reminiscent of Neptune, aren't they? A lot of people are pretty skeptical about calculating temperatures, so to measure the temperature of distant stars and planets, as well as other cosmic bodies and objects, can be analyzed in a spectrum of their radiation. In simpler words, the color of a star depends directly on its temperature. The color plays the role of an indicator, but the temperature itself is affected by the mass. Finally, continuing the theme of the oldest objects, recently astronomers have found one of the oldest stars in the Milky Way. The object J81540, 729, came into existence about 13.5 billion years ago, so believe scientists. The discovered star is located at a distance of 7,500 light years from the scattered area of Stardust Halo Milky Way and belongs to the class of dwarfs. Researchers report that the composition of the star found minimal amounts of iron and calcium. At the same time, the composition contains a high concentration of carbon, indicating the antiquity of the discovered luminary. Most of the chemical elements of the star J81540, 729, are light. Carbon and calcium are present. 
The element iron is present in a very sparse volume, about one millionth of the volume that is present in our sun. In such stars, all elements heavier than hydrogen and helium are found only if the star is very old, one of the first in the universe, and was affected by a supernova explosion that occurred somewhere nearby, when that star was still in its infancy. But while the star is indeed one of the oldest in our galaxy, it has a competitor. The star SMSS SJJ313-67-8 also has a similar carbon, rich and metal poor composition. The study of these rather rare stars will help shed light on the early chemical evolution of our galaxy, as well as the nature of the Milky Way's first stars. Don't forget to give this video a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel if you're not already with us, and see you soon.